Well, praise the Lord, everybody, and bless that wonderful name of Jesus, and welcome to Walking by Faith. Hallelujah. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Hello, I'm Pastor Raynard Sands. I'm the pastor of Be Like Jesus Ministry in this great Pacific Northwest of our wonderful country, the United States of America. Now, I don't know where you watching us from, but I'm glad you tuning in. I wish I could see all of you behind this camera. I'm telling you, this is going to be a great day. Make sure you have your Bible, notebook, pens, and we're going to continue our teaching on uh, ears to hear. Amen. So let's pray. Let's make our daily confession and let's listen to see what the Holy Spirit has to say to us today. Amen. So Father, right now in Jesus name, first of all, I want to thank you for this day. I want to thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for this great privilege to share the great and wonderful gospel, the Lord Jesus Christ, with all of your family and friends. Father, I pray that the Holy Spirit will anoint me and help me to uh, teach this word in simplicity and accuracy to meet the needs of the people. Holy Spirit, I submit myself to you. I thank you. I can hear you clearly. And I thank you, Holy Spirit. You direct me and guide me to help me to emphasize the things you want me to emphasize, the things you want me to uh, clarify so people will be delivered and set free in Jesus' name. And then I thank you, Father, that no weapon formed against us shall prosper, and every tongue that come against us in judgment shall be condemned. So right now in Jesus' name, I just bind every idle word, every corrupt communication, every false accusation every plot, every plan, every strategy, every maneuver that the devil would try to bring against us this day to hinder the word of God and hinder the promises of God from coming to pass in our lives. For we declare and we decree that none of these things of the enemies should come to pass or be manifested in our lives. But we release the peace of God. I just say peace, be still. I release the peace of God over the people of God right now in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father, for revelation knowledge. I thank you for wisdom. I thank you for the direction of the Holy Spirit. And I thank you that the favor of God surrounds us like a shield. I thank you, Father. We won't be just hearers of the word of God, but we'll be doers of the word of God. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said amen and amen. Okay, come on. Get your Bibles. Come on. Glory, get your Bibles, raise them in the air, and let's make this daily confession together. You guys ready? Okay, here we go. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today, I will be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess my mind is alert. My heart is receptive. I will never be the same. I'm about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever living seed of the word of God. I will never be the same. Never, never, never. I will never be the same in Jesus name. Amen. All right. Glory be to God. This is going to be a great day. Hallelujah. This is going to be a great time together in the word. Let's go to Luke chapter 18. These are our foundation scriptures. Luke chapter 18. And let's look at verses uh, uh, 8. Luke 8, 18. I said 18. Luke 8, 18. And we're going to read this in the King James, the Amplified, and the L NLT. Okay, it says, take heed, therefore, how, 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 how ye hear, for whosoever has, to him shall be given, and whosoever has not, from him shall be taken, even that which he seemeth to have. Now, let's look at this in the Amplified Bible, okay? Glory be to God. It says, uh, be careful, therefore, how you listen. For to him who has spiritual knowledge will more be given. And from him who does not have spiritual knowledge, even what he thinks and guesses and supposes that he has will be taken away. Glory. Now let's look at this. Hallelujah. In the New Living Translation, in the NLT, it says, So pay attention to how you hear. To those who listen to my teaching, more understanding will be given. 
But for those who are not listening, even what they think they understand will be taken away from them. Woo! Glory. Man, I tell you, you can preach on that every time I read them, man. You just can stay and preach on that more and more. Hallelujah. Look at Mark chapter 4. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to go over here and mark. Mark chapter 4. And let's look at verses uh, 24 and 25. You guys ready? I'm going to read from the new king. I mean, from the uh, King James verse. It says, and he said unto them, take heed what ye hear. With what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you. And unto you that hear shall more be given. For he that has to him shall be given. And he that has not from him shall be taken even that which he has. Now let's look at this. Also, we're going to look at this in the Amplified Bible and then in the uh, NLT. Okay, Uh, Mark 4. And let's look at verses 24 and 25 in the Amplified Classic. This is the Amplified Classic. It says, and he said to them, be careful what you are hearing. The measure of thought and study you give to the truth you hear will be the measure of virtue and knowledge that comes back to you. And more besides will be given to you who hear. For to him who has, more will be given. And from him who has nothing, even what he what he has will be taken away by force. Woo. Glory. Now look at this in the New Living Translation. In uh, Mark 4, 24, 25, it says this. Then he added, pay close attention to what you hear. You see the difference in Luke is said how and Mark is saying what? Pay close attention to what you hear. The closer you listen, the more understanding you will be given. And you will receive even more. To those who listen to my teaching, more understanding will be given. But for those who are not listening, even what little understanding they have will be taken away from them. Woo, this this is some powerful stuff, man. This is some very uh, valuable stuff, really. This is an an, invaluable teaching here because Jesus is putting an emphasis on you and I, depending on how we hear and what we hear, it's up to us. So we can't blame God. We can't blame the devil. Can't blame the teacher or the preacher. It's up to you and I. See, you have to be, you have to discern. You have to uh, purposefully Listen to what you are hearing, what you are hearing, and how you are hearing. Why? Because faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. We must be making sure we hear the word of God. Now, last week when we were with you, we finished on this. We're going to go back to Mark chapter 4, right here, Mark 4. Remember, we went through the whole parable. The last time we finished, I want to go back to verse 21 and 23, just to give us some uh, continuity and to, and to pick up where we left off. It says, and he said unto them, this is uh, Mark 4, 21, okay, and, and uh, this is Jesus speaking. He just got done telling us about the good seed. And listen, a lot of time I used to separate this phrase from the rest of the parable, but it all goes together. Listen, and he said unto them, is it is a candle brought to be put under a bushel or under a bed and not to to be set on a candlestick for there is nothing hid which shall not be be manifested neither was anything kept secret but it should come abroad and then he says this if any man has ears to hear let him hear now the last time i was with you i was saying now this you can take it separately and you can see Jesus said, hey, we're not supposed to hide our light. We're supposed to let it shine. And then he's saying, if anything is hid, it's going to be made manifest. It's going to come back out. Uh, but that it, that it should be come abroad. If it's seek, it's going to. Now, when we heard that, it's also talking about the seed that's sown. 
What he's saying, if you follow in the teachings of God, if you obey in his word, you're, you're preparing your heart for good ground, we're going to see the results. And he's saying, hey, if it's in there, you ain't, you're ain't. you not going to hide this light. It can't be hidden. This light of the revelation of God, if you follow this, it can't be hidden. One or two things going to happen. We're going to see the results or we're going to see the failure of the crop. So whatever you're doing in secret is going to come out. Okay, what? If you're not doing what this word said, when see, it's not what you do when you're around the church and everybody else. It's what you're doing in secret. All right. See, it's what you're doing when we're not around. And if you're doing what you're supposed to do, it's going to be made manifest. We're going to see the results of you either taking heed, doing what the word said, or not doing it. All right. Hallelujah. Because the good ground, we're going to see the results. If you if you want the uh, by the wayside, thorns, or underground, you know, we're going to see it. Stony ground, we, we're going to see it. Come come on, can I get an amen? amen? Come on, church. Come on, brothers and sisters. See, you can't hide it. We, If you do what this word says to do, we're going to see it. And then Jesus said, if any man have ears to hear, let him hear. Let him hear. See, we are people. God produced in you and I. To bring forth fruit. Remember what Jesus said? Every tree that bears not fruit, what happens? The Father chops it down. He cuts it down. And remember over there, I think it's in John chapter 50. He said, you know, no man can produce without, uh, you know, the, the branch can't go without the vine. You can do nothing without Christ. What is that? That's his teaching. That's his word. If you do what Christ says to do, you're going to produce. But he said, and then the father, he prunes the tree. Why? Watch this. So it can bring forth more fruit. God is always looking for you and I to produce fruit. Where did that fruit get produced from? From the word of God. From the, as long as you and I do what Jesus says and follow the sayings of God, we're going to see the fruit in our life. Come on, you, how many of you understand? This is not hard. K-I-S-S. Keep it simple, saints. This is not hard. How, how simple is it? I must obey and follow the teachings of Jesus or Almighty God. And if I do that, peop, not only you, but people also will see the fruits and the blessings in your life. Amen. Don't make an excuse as, oh, the devil's doing this and all that. No, but don't give him more power than he has because he has none. The only power the devil has is what you forfeit over to him because he's been stripped of all his power. Jesus has stripped him. That's another teaching for another time. But don't give the devil uh, more glory and, and stuff like he's doing. He, he's defeated. The only way he, he keeps you in defeat, he must deceive you and bring deception and, and manipulate you to believe that it's God doing this to teach you something. But that's not the truth. Amen. The truth is God has given us a victory. This is the victory that overcomes the world. What? Even our faith. Our faith in the word of God. And the faith is acting on the word of God. Okay. So look at this in verse 24. Let's look at Mark. Uh, 424 says, and he said unto them, take heed what ye hear. Now, this is our foundation scripture. He says, take heed what ye hear. With what measure ye meek, it shall be measured to you. And unto you that hear shall more be given. For he that has to him shall be given. And he that has not from him shall be taken even that which he has. Now, I don't know if my technician can do this, but I want to look at this over here. Let's look at this in the uh, New Living Translation. Can we go to Mark 4, 24 in the New Living? Okay. In the New Living Translation. Because I wanted to put that on the screen. Are we able to do that? Yes. Okay, now look at this. I want you to see this. Jesus says, then he added, pay close attention to what you hear. You have to, see, this takes discipline. 
He says, pay close attention to what you hear. The closer you listen, the more understanding you will be given. See, that's the measure. How, see, how are you measuring the word of God? How are you listening to the word of God? Then he says, and you will receive even more. So who is that up to? That's up to you and I. See, you have to have ears to hear. When you come to church, do you have the attitude, oh, I heard that before. See, every time I listen to a teaching tape or, or they, they CDs now or, or MP3, one of the things the Lord had to teach me is every time you hear it, you must respond with the same excitement like you first heard it. Why? Because that seed has to be watered by the word of God. So every time I heard, I don't come, if I have the attitude, oh, I already heard that. Or if I listen to one of the men or women of God, oh, I already heard that story before. If you're not careful, you're going to miss something. You're going to miss something. Every time you hear that story, you're going to hear something you didn't hear before. I guarantee you. But you have to have that same hunger and reverence and discipline to pay close attention. Why? Remember God says, Paul said, one water, okay? One, one so, one water, but God gives the increase. That's the same way it is with the word of God. You may have been listening to this. I don't know how many weeks we've been doing ears to hear. Every time you hear them scriptures, you have to have to say, okay, okay, Lord. Oh, I see something different this time. And, but why? It's water in the seed. That's why it says faith comes by hearing, not comes by having heard. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. It is, it is continuum and infinitum. It mean it never stop. You never stop hearing the word. You, we, we can never exhaust Mark 4, 24, 25. You think you got everything out of that that we need to see? No way. Why? Because this word is eternal. And I guarantee you, if we stick with it long enough, God will begin to show us more things we never seen before. But you have to keep that hunger. Why? Because when you first heard that word, now God's coming back to water. How long do God have to water it before you see the harvest? I don't know, but it's up to you how you receive it. It's up to you and I. And that's why my wife would tell you, if my wife was here, when we go to church, I don't like to bring my phone in. I don't like to be a distraction. We go to conferences. I don't even want to talk. Baby, we talk when we're done. Why? Because my life depends on this. My life, things I may be missing, things I need to understand. All of a sudden, like, oh, I see it now, Lord. I see it. I see where I've been missing it. Oh, okay, God, help me, Lord. I repent. See, what? Because we don't know everything. We don't know everything. Listen to, look, let's look at this again. It says, pay close attention to what you hear. The closer you listen, the more understanding you will be. What did it say? The closer you listen, the more understanding you will begin. What did the Bible say? Get wisdom, get knowledge, but what is it? Get understanding. Get understanding. The more understanding will be given and you will receive what? Even more. Why? Because God knows you honor the word. You're paying close attention to his teaching. You're listening to him. And then look what it says in verse 25. To those who listen to my teaching, more understanding will be given. Now listen to this. But for those who are not listening. See, that lets you know everybody's not listening. I pray that you guys are listening. That's why we pray against the enemy when we first start, against all dista distraction, anything the devil would try to bring to hinder this word. Because remember, we be, in the beginning of this parable, we all remember, what is the devil after? He's after the word. Why? Because he knows that this incorruptible, indestructible, ever living seed of the word of God will change your life. It's the most powerful force on the face of the earth. What? The word of God. But you got to receive it by faith and you got to have a diligence and then you got to protect that seed. There's not a circumstance or situation that any of you face in the day that the word of God cannot solve. 
I'm telling you, I don't care what it is. I don't care what's going on in your life. There's nothing you and I face today that the Word of God cannot solve or fix. And he says, but for those who are not listening, whew, this, these are some powerful sayings of Jesus. They were simple, but yet powerful. This is really easy. See, he's saying, look, it depends on how you, you choose to listen, what you choose to hear, how close you listen to my teaching, more be given. And then he says, but for those who are not listening, see, those who don't pay attention, just take this for granted. Even what little understanding they have will be taken away from them. Man, that, see, that should, that should put a fear of God in you or a reverence to want to know more of God. For he that has, and this is, I'm back in the King James. See, he says, for he that has to him shall be given. And he that has not from him shall be taken even that which he has. Who's that? Who would that rely on? That relies on you and I. That depends on you and I. It's our choice. It's your choice and my choice. Something we must do daily. How much do I value the Word of God? Before we started taping the day for you to see this broadcast, we were talking and setting up and, and realizing, see, I was a military guy. I was served in the United States Army. And I have friends that served in the Army, and I know people who used to be in the military. And we get together and we talk, and you can get all of us together, and you can tell us. We, now, we may not look the same. We may not be as physically fit as we were then, but you can get us together, and we can, they say, fall into formation. We will still know what to do. We may not move as fast, but we would know what to do. If they said dress right, dress, we know what to do. If they said left face, we would know what to do. If they said forward march, see what? The basic stuff that we were taught, some of us, 30, 40 years ago, <laughs> we would still remember. Still remember. Why? It was the basics. It was the basic. We were trained and we learned to listen to the orders of the commanders, the sergeants, our squad leaders. And what? The orders that came from up top never changed when it got to the lowest person. Why am I saying that? That's the way it should be in the body of Christ. Why do we have so many different type of teachings and different doctrines? Because somebody must not be listening to the orders of the commander in chief. Who's the commander in chief? God Almighty. And what did he do? He sent Jesus, the chief of staff, the chief of staff, the king of kings. See, he's in charge of all the battalions, all the companies. See, he's in charge. Now, when he gave out orders and told us to listen to his teaching, his words, that's what we do. But somewhere, somehow, religious people got smart. Now, look, don't get offended. And they begin to start teaching and saying things that Jesus didn't say. And what happened? People begin to believe it. Like hell go one for one. God don't fill people with the Holy Ghost. That, that is over. That, that has stopped with the disciple. Healing is not for us today. Okay, all these different things that Jesus never said. Jeez, but what? Somewhere down the ranks, people start teaching and saying things that Jesus didn't say. And what happened? Now we got so many believers that believe a lot of different things that are not in line with the Word of God. Here were one you hear people say. God helps those that help themselves. Now that sounds real good. That sounds spiritual. But God never said that. Benjamin Franklin did. But people say that like it came out of the Bible. If you take one step, God will take two. All of that stuff sounds good, but it's not in the Bible. God put this sickness on me to teach me something. That's not in the Bible. 
Jesus did this because he knew I could be humble and I could bear this to be a good witness. That's not in the Bible. It's really a, really a form of pride, of false humility. Because why would you and I want to do or believe something that God didn't tell us to do? He provided it for us for us to walk into. But why is it there? We're not taking heed to what we hear and how we hear it. See, I'm just using a military illustration. If the commander in chief gives an order, it should never change when it comes to the lowest of the low of us. It all should be the same. But because communication somewhere was cut off, and who you think did this? The devil. The devil. When I was in the military, one of the things we did, boy, you cut off the enemy communication system. You cut off this communication system, they start saying things that wasn't there, they in the wrong place, people get killed in battle because of the communication. Now that's the same thing we see in the body of Christ. Why am I saying this? Church, you and I must take heed to what we hear and we must take heed to how we hear. And it must be the teachings of Almighty God. Amen. Well, listen, I'm, I'm almost out of time. Boy, this is getting so good. I'm telling you, the more we, deeper we get into it, the better it gets. But please make sure you invite some families and friends. I'm out of time for the day. Now, I want you to do this with me. I want you to pray. We believe in my wife and I and our church. We are believing for 300 new partners. This is all we want. We asking you to pray about it. 300 partners that would give $20 a month. That's all. $20 a month. You say, why is that? That help takes the cost. There's other studios we want to get on, other things we want to do to get the gospel out. But that helps pays the cost for our production. It helps pays the cost to get the word out. We have opportunity to get on other stations, but we need money. So we want you to pray and ask. Email us and let us know if you should be one of those 300s that say, Pastor, I can give $20 a month. Amen and help us get this gospel and get people into the kingdom of God. Okay, well, that's all I'm asking you to pray. 300, 300, $20 a month. That's all we look asking you for, to commit to. And now if God tells you to do more, we want you to do that, but we need at least 300. That's what we believe in for. Okay, have a blessed day. I'll see you next week, but remember this, that God is exalted. Satan, that no good low down sap sucker, he is defeated. And I want you to remember, I remember, tell all your family members and friends that Jesus is Lord. Have a blessed week. We'll see you next week. P-O-H. Peace out, homies and homies. God bless you. Bye.